Stocks have turned lower now after inflation came in warm this morning. Equities are down. Yields are up, dollars up, NVIDIA dipped from the last week, getting bought though. One of the few green spots in today's market. Let's talk about tech, let's do some trading with Ivana Dalewska joining us from Spear Invest and Tom White here in studio. Ivana's the founder and CIO. Ivana, great to see you again. Uh, so do we just buy any and all dips in NVIDIA and chips right now? Well, Oliver, NVIDIA still looks pretty attractive on fundamental basis. We still see a lot of upside in earnings. Not, not this year as much as if you look out in 25 and, and beyond. The street is assuming only less than 20% CAGR. And during the past cycle for data center, which didn't even have this transformer model and Gen AI, we saw 40% CAGR sustained for several years. So we still see upside to the earnings estimates and we, we don't think the valuation is unreasonable here. Okay, uh, what type of uh, valuation can they uh, command right now? Uh, given the big earnings boom, we actually didn't see any uh, blow off in valuations, but it started to warm up a little bit here. Last a month and a half, we're now like a 35 forward PE. Uh, does NVIDIA just get a pass with the growth at this point? That's right, Oliver. So this is basically the, mid, the middle of the range. We're looking at EVBDA in the low 20s, and we believe 20 is some sort of a floor for the stock. So for you to see this in a bubble territory, you would need to see 40s uh, in terms of multiples. And that's when we would be getting concerned. So it's really all about, we don't think, we don't expect multiple expansion from here. We believe the stock is gonna have to deliver stronger earnings than the estimates are currently for. So it's not really a multiple expansion story, but you could see some multiple expansion as well. Ivana, the thing that I guess uh, I still am trying to get a hold of in my mind is how the market has broadened out, especially in the chip category where there are very few. There's basically none. There's like one or two chip stocks that are off the highs. Many of them have exploded higher now with NVIDIA in the last month and a half. How do we reconcile that with the market domination narrative that seems to be clear in NVIDIA's earnings? Are there any threats? Are there not? Is the market expanding in such a way that everybody's partaking? It seems like we've been told all the NVIDIA products are gonna be crushing their peers. How do we make all that make sense? Well, I do believe there is space for multiple players here. So we like AMD as well on that, on that basis. We believe they're gonna be able to capture some share. However, I would say NVIDIA is the only one that is delivering earnings upside real time today. All the other players reported pretty disappointing earnings everywhere outside of AI. And for these companies, AI is a very small percentage of their earnings, unlike for NVIDIA, right? So they weren't even able to offset the base business. The upside from AI wasn't even able to offset the base business. However, I would say that we are at the bottom of the cycle for a lot of these other semiconductor areas like consumer, PC, client, all of those have really seen several quarters now of declines. So as that stabilizes, you're gonna see upside in the rest of the semiconductor value chain as well. Okay, uh, NVIDIA, as of the last check for your fund, the uh, Spear Alpha ETF, SPRX, actually second by a small amount to Zscaler, which is the top holding now. So kind of break down your biggest ones for me. You got Sentinel-1 after that. It seems like you do have a cybersecurity focus in there. Does that tie into AI? Are they using those tools? Are they part of the same theme? That's right, Oliver. So cybersecurity is one of our top themes for this year. And we believe cybersecurity will benefit from AI in two ways. First of all, the cyber attacks are much more sophisticated. So you're gonna need more sophisticated solutions that are AI based and gen AI based uh, to fend off these, these cyber, uh, cyber threats. And then on the other hand, you do see an explosion in data and usage of the cloud. And a lot of the cloud today is actually not secured. So a lot of the applications that are in the cloud today, they're not really properly secured. And this is something that very few people understand. And the cloud cybersecurity market is in very early innings of adoption. It's only a less than a $2 billion market today. 
Yeah, I see a lot of cloud, snowflake in there as well, crowd strike. You guys definitely have that uh, security focus. Chips also another big part of it. Seems like Marvell is one you consider highly ranked in this category too. That's right. So we believe Marvell is going to benefit on the networking side. The company reported pretty disappointing earnings elsewhere. So we believe that as these uh, other markets bottom in the first and second quarter of this year, you're going to see the stock uh, kind of take the next leg up and AI will actually be able to make an incremental contribution rather than just offsetting these weak trends. And remember, Oliver, a lot of people forgot that 4Q was actually a very big quarter for the economy. So everybody that is reporting poor earnings right now, a lot of that is now a little bit backwards looking. So I, I don't think people should be putting too much weight on that and should look forward to, to these trends and to these markets bottoming. Okay. A one category, uh, I, I must say, and you don't have to comment, but Business Insider just uh, labeled you as the new Kathy Wood is beating ARC. One stock I definitely see that's not in here is Tesla, but you've got Rivian in there. Is there, I feel like that's your contrarian streak. Tell me about the Rivian love. That looks like a top 10 holding last I checked. That's right. So we, we are starting to double into the EV space. We think we're at nearing a bottom here. And Rivian is one where we believe this quarter, this year is a transition year. And the fourth quarter of this year is really going to show where the company's potential and steady state. So we believe they're going to turn not only, um, not only gross margin positive in fourth quarter, but they're going to see some real profitability improvement in 2025. And remember, the guidance for this year, a lot of people were very disappointed by the production guide, but it's really like almost irrelevant because they're making significant upgrades to their manufacturing facility. So they're not really going to lose more money even, even though they're producing less vehicles. So the, the guide basically, it's almost irrelevant. It's all about 2025. Think they're going to be able to ramp it up uh it seems like okay ivana great to catch up thanks for the uh insight into what's in the fund and a great year uh as you're crushing the s p crushing the nasdaq great stuff appreciate you joining us ivana delevska all right uh tom let's do some options trading here of yeah, course yeah. uh as we talked about our fund there that's done great uh the spear x fund sprx uh you're an options trader so the yeah. approach here if you want to buy dips in nvidia let's start there yeah, um, I think there's multiple ways you can play this. You know, you can sell out of the money put verticals. Implied volatility level is still elevated, even though the stock's just off all-time highs that we hit last Friday. 974 was that price target. So, but you can use and leverage that higher implied volatility to do directional trades while still limiting what your exposure and risk is. So I looked at something uh, just a week out. They've got their GTC conference Q&A sessions next week. We might hear some... Uh, from uh, some stuff from the CEO uh, based on maybe growth projection. So that's going to be a big week. So I went out to that March 22nd weekly cycle, 10 days to expiration. You're going to capture that GTC event that they have. Uh, and I'm going to buy uh, an unbalanced or broken wing call butterfly to the upside to offset some of my costs on this bullish trade. Yeah, you can buy a straight call, right? But there's a lot of extrinsic value as option premiums expanded. Uh, where the stock could go up and maybe you don't make money. So I looked at an a, a unbalanced call butterfly here in that March 22nd weekly cycle. Buying one of the 875 strike call is just out of the money to the upside here. Sell two of the 900 strike call. That's where you want it to go. And then buy one of the 910 strike call. So in essence, you're buying a bullish $25 wide call vertical, offset, offsetting some of the cost by selling a $10 wide short call vertical, mm. that 900, 910. You're paying roughly about a 650 debit on it. There's your risk, 650 bucks per spread. Break even, 881.50. Uh, that's just about over 1% above the current share price. You don't need an explosion to the upside, but anything above that break even of uh, 881.50 is gonna be profitability. Now, above 910, your profitability goes down, but mm -hmm. it's still more than a double uh, on this particular trade. So you're offsetting some costs, still a bullish trade. So you sell the 910. Sell the 900, uh, 910 call vertical, but then you're buying the 875, 900. So right, okay, so 900's one, right in the middle there. Yeah, one by two by one. Got it, okay, so there's um, uh, two spreads here. 
with the overlapping strike at 900. Right. Yep. Okay. That's the body of the unbalanced butterfly. Got it. All right. Mm -hmm. So then you get, um, you know, upside exposure to NVIDIA that gets capped out, but you give yourself a little bit of uh, stretch in case it doesn't happen immediately. Yeah, your risk is lower. Mm -hmm. uh, your cost basis is lower. Your uh, break even is actually lower. You don't only need like a 1.2% to get above that break even from current share price. So you don't need an explosive move, but if it grinds higher, you take advantage of that. Okay. All right. Nice. Thanks, Tom. All right. Appreciate the trade. NVIDIA up yep. this morning back above 2%.